we recording? Mm -hmm. I thought you haven't looked at any yet. Oh, well, we're doing this part first, anyways. <laughs> Sometimes we can just wing it, you know. Okay, let's see. Can I do this? That was pretty weak. bit better. I'm pretty, pretty okay, content. <laughs> you, you did have it that one time there. It did, it did work out. I got lipstick all over it. So, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sherry Ann. I'm Brian. And where are we? <laughs> where are we? We are Rowena Francis. Rowena? Francis. That's right. Yes. So today we are talking about another name of God, and today we're going to dive into the name Jehovah Karen Yishi. Karen Yishi. Karen Yishi. I can even pronounce this one. <laughs> Karen Yishi. <laughs> and it means it. <laughs> horn of my salvation. Horn of my salvation. Mm -hmm. So have you ever wondered throughout the years about uh, how in arts and literature and all kinds of media, there's there's horns everywhere, all you over know, the place. All over the place, right? There, you know, people are adorned with horns. There's there's horns that are attached to people's bodies. Some of them they're attached in helmets or other types of things. Beauty and the Beast. Yes. There's there's that creature. What is his name? Sully. Sully's got horns, doesn't he? Got Maleficent. Horns? Ooh, okay, I the like dark and the evil side. Even though it's dark and evil, I do mm. like the way her horns are portrayed. She's got some pretty nice looking horns. Look at horns. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. What do you mean? <laughs> They're nice horns. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll leave it. <laughs> You know, you got Thor and Odin, you know, all these mm -hmm. Vikings and, you know, mytho myth mythological, mythological creatures. creatures, you know, they got these big horns and, uh, and I love horns, right? We, but what's the purpose of horns? Because they're awesome. They're awesome. Yes. You know what? They are kind of awesome. They are. Horns are awesome. And you know who else is awesome? God is. God is awesome. He is. And you know what's so cool? He has a name with a horn in it. That's right. Okay, fine. I won't do it again. There we go. <laughs> Jehovah Karen Yishi, the horn of my salvation. Well, what and is... that is what we are going to talk about today. That's right. What does it mean? It means horn of my salvation. Well. What does that mean? I don't know. What Let's talk... Why don't we talk about what horns mean first? Okay, fine. Horns mean strength. And power and virtue and might and victory. I mean, horns, I mean, this is what they represent. I mean, you see a horn on a ram, and, and it's just something that just, True. you know, protrudes off of their skeleton, and it's just, it's just something that is magnificent. Mm -hmm. And so, horns, this is part of what they mean. It's that strength, that power, that might, that victory, right? There's horns is, is literary in the Bible as well. There's all kinds of mentions to horns in the, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I did. You did. I love it. What do you know about horns in the Bible? Um, well, I know about the horn when David was anointed king. There is right? a situation where David was anointed king and there was a horn. We can come back to that in a second, too. Okay. We'll There's another that. horn that talked about even uh, Zacharias was a man. Mm -hmm. Right? Who was Zacharias again? Elizabeth's husband? He was the, yep, yeah, yeah, the father of John, John the, the Baptist. Baptist. And he was inspired to prophesy once about, you know, the, the physical and spiritual deliverance uh, of, that was going to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you know that? And what did it say? It said, see the symbolism of a horn. In this case, it was representing the power of God. And I'm going to read it to you if I can. In Luke 1, 68. Luke 1, 68. By the way, Luke 1 is a very long chapter. I mean, 68 verses. I mean, it goes it goes even beyond that. How many chapters in the Bible have that many long-lasting Psalm 119 has a lot. Psalm 119 probably <laughs> is the longest, but I'm pretty sure that Luke 1 is probably pretty close to number 2. Yeah, so I'm going to read it to you. It says, Blessed is the Lord of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. 
You see, the Bible uses these examples all the time, right? It talks about, you know, horns as power, right? And it says in Psalm 71.10, it says, God says, I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, and the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. In other words, the righteous will prevail. No matter how the wicked men seem to be, the righteous will always prevail. And that's what that scripture is talking about, the horns of the righteous being lifted up. And also another one in Jeremiah 48, 25. Mm -hmm. It says, Moab's horn is cut off and his arm is broken, says the Lord. And this is talking about the strength of Moab that is gone. Right? It's good. Yes. So I want to kind of go back to... You want to go back to David's I like, word. I like this story just right. because... It's a um, great story. It is a good story. Mm -hmm. But um, if you guys know the story of David, David was just a shepherd boy. Mm -hmm. And he was um, basically seemingly insignificant in his father's house. And so the prophet came and he was going to anoint. The Lord had told um, the prophet Samuel to go to the house of Jesse, which was David's father, mm -hmm. and uh, to anoint the next king of Israel. And so when he got there, he took a horn and in the horn there was oil and it was used to anoint uh, the next king. Mm -hmm. And so basically what he did is he went through all of David's brothers and he says, none of these are God's chosen. Surely you must have another son somewhere. It's gotta be another kid. And, and Jesse says, well, I do have this other son. You know, he's out doing his job tending the sheep. And wasn't uh, even invited he, to the party. He wasn't even invited. Like that feels a little like, ouch, yeah. you know? All this is found by the way in 1 Samuel 16. Yeah. So, so then they go out, they get David, he comes back, he's just a young shepherd boy. And uh, like I said, seemingly insignificant. And then sure enough, when um, Samuel held the uh, horn of oil over David's head, the seal broke and the anointing mm -hmm. oil anointed David as the next king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is really interesting because it was the horn, first of all, that carried the oil mm -hmm. that poured out the anointing. Um, I, I like, you know, the way she, that she described it there where it says the horn, or so the, the plug in the horn broke, mm -hmm. right? Which, you know, it, it, it was Samuel who filled that horn up with oil, but it was a plug that was put in and it, and it talks about, you know, even it, it, it's God himself is the one who unsealed and break, broke that seal so that the anointing of oil would fall out over uh, David, who was going to become the future king. That's right. And so I think that's a, a very powerful example of how, how even horns, how they can how they can carry carry oil and carry the anointing right so this is another mm -hmm. symbol there's so many multiple facets to god and the way that he uses horns mm -hmm. you know another representation uh of horns in the bible was when the children of israel were instructed or moses was instructed to build uh the altar of god do you know what was on the corner of the altar it's really simple horns Right, so on the on the edge of the the corners of the altar, there were horns, mm -hmm. and um, and they were used. Right, so there was different things that they, you know, it was consecrated, and and things were set apart. Right, with those particular horns, and and it says that when when they were utilized, you know, right, I think that they actually had had blood and stuff that was sprinkled on the horns. Does that sound like anybody else who had, you know, you know, there was some sort of strength and power and might and, and blood that ended up being sprinkled, you know, during the sacrifice, sacrifice process? It's a foreshadowing of oh. Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Ah. And this brings us to the horn of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the horn of our salvation. Yes. And this is amazing. I love praying Jehovah Karen Yishi, Jehovah, the Lord, our God, the Lord our salvation, the horn of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, it, as these horns were used in the, on the altar, right, they were there, there is an atonement that was made mm -hmm. for the sins of the people, which is what Christ ultimately made an atonement for us. And that is, that's found back in the, in the book of good old Leviticus. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can take a look at Leviticus 8, 15, uh, and 4, 6, right? Both of those I told you talk about the, the foreshadowing. But another unique circumstance, which I found was during the, the time of that's, what's his name? The smart guy. Who's the real smart guy in the Bible? So, oh, Solomon. That's right. It was Solomon. King Solomon. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so do you know that, you know, in this whole little process of, of him becoming king, there was a, a few different uh, things that happened where military people, they actually went into, uh, into the temple, and what did they do? They hung on to the altar of God, and they hung on by the horns. And you know what they did there? They pled for mercy. Mm. So there was mercy, and there was safety in the on the altar of God attached to you know where the, those horns were and so you know uh, I think they in that particular case they got dragged off of the altar and uh, still you know were slain in the midst of this process <laughs> but they knew that they could that they could hang on to the altar there and that they could plead for mercy because that's what was set up and that was mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of cases of that in first Kings uh, 1 uh, 50 and uh, 228 was is where it was uh, Adonai or Adonijah, something like that, and Job. Adonijah. Adonijah, Adonijah. And, oh, and Job were the two people who both hung on to the altar, mm. uh, the horns on the altar. Mm. It reminds me of, I don't, I don't even know where it's found right now, but it's in Psalms where it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and mm -hmm. they are safe. And that just depicts that all together. You know, we can mm -hmm. know the character of God. He's revealed himself to us in scripture through the names that, um, and the situations that we can read about mm -hmm. and so when we know what his character is entailing then we can run to him and we can trust in him and there is safety in him and there is salvation mm -hmm. in his name so we're going to end this video with just a little bit of uh, an insight and so each of these names of god we tell you are excellent ways to be able to pray for your day so mm -hmm. why don't you give us an example of how you can pray the name karen Yishi? okay <laughs> so this is like this is a surprise to her you know all right okay go ahead all right well um i would just pray something like this wait, wait, okay I'm, I'm praying okay stop okay you pray first father god i thank you lord <laughs> that you are Jehovah Karen Yishi, that you're the horn of my salvation. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that today you are full of power, you are full of might, and you are full of strength this day. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that today, that Father God, that you lift me up, Father God, with strength, that you impart into me, Father God, the ability to be able to walk and to endure this day. I thank you, Lord, that you've saved me from, from my enemies. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've blessed us. I thank you, Father God, that you are the God of salvation. You're the God of freedom, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that as I call upon you this day, as I look at the safety and the protection within the atonement on the altar of God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that there is salvation in it for me this yes. day. See, that's an example how you can pray. Yeah, and I want to continue on with it. All right, you go ahead and you pray now, too. Oh, Father, I thank you that you are Jehovah Karen Yishi, the horn of my salvation. I thank you that you are the Lord the God, the self-existent one, Jehovah. And I thank you that there is safety in who you are. I thank you that your word says that the righteous run to you and they are safe, Father. Mm -hmm. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And so I thank mm -hmm. you that your word also states that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. And so this day, Father, I thank you for safety in your name. I thank you that mm -hmm. you are here with me and that you are leading us, that you are guiding us, Father. But I thank you for your divine protection, the salvation that we have because of you and because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross this day and because he shed his blood. We give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the wrapping up another name of God. We're going to be back again, probably not in the next video, but maybe in the next video. I don't know. Some <laughs> video in the future. We'll be doing another name of God. We're going to continue this on. So we'll see you guys soon and have a great day.